All right, guys, I did it again. I bought another LS swapped German vehicle. This one of the Porsche flavor. I just, I couldn't pass it up. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh. This is a custom built for SEMA wide body 911 LS swapped six speed manual transmission. It's got issues. It overheats, but I got it for a really good price. I think let's, let's start taking a look at it. Look at the dish on these wheels. This is crazy. Savini, Savini wheels. They're 19s, 315, 25. But this is a 1999 911 Carrera LS. So cool. And this is not a factory paint color. I believe this is a Toyota paint color, but a full respray. This has an all aluminum LS1 engine. And supposedly it's got one of the biggest cams you can fit in one of these. So it should sound pretty radical. I've heard some video clips online, but this thing isn't fully tuned. So I don't know how well it's really going to run at this stage. And like I said, it overheats. So I don't think it has many miles on it as is. This was probably done, brought to SEMA and then I don't know, maybe not use that much. I don't know if I've ever seen an LS swap 911 in person, but this is exactly what I was thinking. Look at this, this is crammed in there. It's even touching the intake. So that is, yeah, I have to fix that. It's rubbing right here on the, what do we call this? The hood or the trunk? Whoa, okay, I saw pictures of the interior online. Oh, and they crammed a bunch of parts in here too. I don't know what we're getting, um, but yeah, they did a lot of work on the interior. So obviously a custom steering wheel with buttons that aren't connected to anything. What is this? Is that really where this goes? That's that's where the owner's manual goes? I'm assuming there's no glove box, is that the deal? This is a family channel, so I'm not gonna show this, but don't, yeah, die. That's that's not cool, I don't like that. How am I gonna show my kids this? Oh, it's a sticker. Oh, okay, good, yeah, goodbye. Yeah, we, we don't need that. What does this say here? NRG, that's more like it. Get out of here. Ugh. I guess that was my first official repair on the 911. Dude, just got this box out of the way. There better not be a glove box. Yeah, okay, all right. There's no glove box, so they gotta put it here. I don't, I still don't like it. It's gotta be somewhere else. Porsche guys, let me know. Do a lot of Porsches have their owner's manual so readily accessible? The pictures just didn't do this thing justice at all as far as how wide it is. This is, it's impressive. I went to SEMA for the first time last year and realized that when people say SEMA built, it doesn't necessarily mean it's like in mint condition and perfect. In fact, it was kind of like the opposite. A lot of the cars there were just kind of built for SEMA and they weren't super functional. So I don't know. This one runs and drives supposedly. Okay, first start. Shifter is wild. The key is on this side. Andy, thank you for not destroying my car. Thank you. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. There we go. <laughs> I'm driving it. This definitely has a gigantic cam. Woo!
Now, I always like to give new cars a bath before we rip into them and potentially discover that they need a ton of work and are gonna be dead in my shop forever. So before we get to that, I gotta let you guys know about a killer deal on the brand new Avalon King Armor Shield Max. This just came out. It's a new DIY ceramic coating kit, so it comes with everything you need. And they're running an insane deal right now just for you guys when you buy the Armor Shield Max kit you're gonna get a free 16 ounce Armor Shield light fast ceramic spray. That's a $35 value. And they're throwing in a mystery gift for the first 100 of you guys who orders. All you gotta do is click the link down below. Let's give this Porsche a wash. Man, this thing is wide. 911 is clean. Oh man, this paint looks pretty good. Now the way this works is the ceramic coating bonds with the pores of your clear coat, forming an invisible layer and protecting your car from the elements. And this will keep your car cleaner for longer in between washes. And it's way easier to apply than messy wax. So the application for the Armor Shield Max is exactly the same as the Armor Shield 9. It is the easiest thing in the world, but you get an upgraded applicator pad, which is really nice. And you're just gonna put a few drops drops on, coat the surface. We're gonna wait 60 seconds, and then you simply buff it off, and that's it. You can do an entire car in about an hour, hour and a half, and this is gonna give you three years worth of protection versus two for the Armor Shield 9. Oh, and the cure time is only four hours, fully cured in four hours versus 48 for the Armor Shield 9. And the Armor Shield Light Ceramic Spray offers a couple of months of protection. It takes just a few minutes to apply, and it makes for an excellent quick detailer or top coat for your Armor Shield Max. Oh, and you know my favorite part? Stuff is an awesome trim restore. Look at that. Don't buy a separate trim restoring product. You can shave years off the look of your car by restoring your trim in just a few seconds. Beautiful. So take advantage of this deal. Get your Armor Shield light for free and a mystery gift for the first 100 of you. This is limited time and limited quantity. And every time I promote this stuff, it sells out in a few days. So take advantage. This stuff is amazing. Now, let's continue to dig in to my 911. All right, guys, it's actually been a few weeks since I bought the 911. You guys may have seen this as a teaser in the background of other videos. I've just been shuffling it around the shop. It's been kind of getting in the way while I work on the DeLorean. I bought these two cars around the same time, but I had my goal of getting that done before Halloween. So I focused on the DeLorean and, and I've been dying to get into this thing and show it to you guys. So I haven't touched it and we haven't even discovered what's inside. So let's go do that and I'll tell Tell you guys in a minute, but guess how much I paid for this? A wide body, six speed manual LS swapped 911 that's been fully painted. And these wheels, they cost like $10,000. Guess, take a guess, comment down below. So I bought this from a guy who bought it two years ago. In the listing, it said that it overheated and it was missing a few things from the swap. They didn't really complete the swap. So it's like an unfinished SEMA build that's broken. And he brought it to two different shops and they looked at it and kind of just gave up. No one can figure it out. They quoted him like a few thousand dollars just to start digging in and he didn't want to spend the money. It was kind of nice that I was able to duplicate that. It was overheating when we got it off the trailer, but the car came with an insane amount of parts. What do we have? Oh. I definitely saw an intake manifold. Oh, and there's a water pump too. I have no idea how to move these seats around. Okay. Here's a box. Okay, we have a Porsche book. Projects for you. Okay, cool. That's really nice, actually. We have a lot of the factory work instructions. Well, for the factory engine, at least. There we go. Yeah, this does not, you know, recline. Ooh, look at this. Maybe this will fix the intake problem because we're just shutting the rear hood right on the intake. It's, it's no good. Uh, what in the world is this? Oh, it's like really heavy duty weather stripping, probably for the wide body. We have a thermostat housing. Cool. What is this? This is a shifter. Oh, the factory shifter. And here is an LS water pump. I'll go around this way. Yeah, this is just an LS water pump. So I wonder if they use this one. It didn't help with the overheating. So they swapped out to whatever's on it now. Not sure. Oh, wow. We have an intake with a throttle body and injectors. Oh, okay. Whew. I think this is a truck manifold. 
Maybe it wouldn't clear. Yeah, it's got to be it. These look like factory injectors as well. All right, I mean, I'll take it. Anyone need a truck manifold out there? I think I got everything out of the back. Uh, it does not have rear seats. It has kind of this little mini roll cage that these shock reservoirs attach to. And we can see the top of the shock right there. This might have a really, really nice suspension system on this. This is from AST. It's kind of just zip tight in there, but okay. All right, let's get into this box of parts. Random hoses. Uh, this is a fan relay kit. Just the wiring. Ooh, is this a throttle body? Oh no, this is a mass airflow sensor. That looks brand new. Nice. And there's an oil temp gauge. Okay. Yeah, so we got an LS mass air. That is an awesome part to have around. You never know. What's wrapped up in this green bubble wrap? Oh, here we go. Here's a throttle body. I knew there was a throttle body in here somewhere. I'm just kidding. I have no idea what's in here. All right, this is a mechanical LS throttle body. Sweet, more spare parts for one of my LS cars. I'm gonna assume I don't need it for this. Transmount insert. Parking brake cable? Maybe funnel. We have a brand new unopened part here. Oh, this is like Christmas, guys. This is the way to buy a car. Sight unseen with mystery boxes of stuff inside. This looks pretty. Is this an oil adapter? Oh, this is a really nice billet aluminum, I, I believe some kind of oil adapter, fluid adapter, something like that. You guys guess on the purchase price yet? No, if not, I'm just gonna tell you right now, $27,000. 27 grand, that's what I paid for this, which I think is a killer deal. The swap is already done. It doesn't look to have air conditioning or power steering and it overheats, but 27 grand. This has a custom paint job, custom wide body kit. They probably spent that just in paint and body alone, plus the LS swap. If the engine's okay, I think this is a killer deal. To be driving around a car like this for 27 grand, out of this world. Speaking of out of this world, what are all these parts? Um, these look like little suspension links, uh, adjustment tools for the suspension, header gaskets, more air intake stuff. Oh, receipts from Porsche. Oh, more receipts, yes. More throttle bodies, yes. An air pump. Oh, an AC compressor. Look at that, cool. It's gotta be the factory one. Factory air intake parts and, oh, we got a starter. Huh, do not strike with hammer, Bosch starter. But, okay, um, we got studs. More new stuff. What is this? The original listing from a couple of years ago. I forget, I think it was on like Bring a Trailer or one of those types of auction sites. It said that it came with the parts to fix the overheating, but that's all it said. Oh, this is a fuel pressure gauge right here. Oh, nice. Oh, a big cooler right here. Transmission cooler, engine oil cooler, something like that. I wonder if these are the parts that they included to fix the issue. I don't know about that. Oh, get out of here, man. This is really nice, expensive stuff. I mean, it looks expensive, I gotta look this up, but. What? Look at this. Dude, if this doesn't get used on the Porsche, it's getting used on something. All right, those are the parts that came with my car. $27,000 Carrera LS. Hmm, Carrera LSC. Could easily add that to the side. Hang on, there's so many parts, I forgot to look at this one. Uh, looks like we have Hawks brake pads. They are new, a gas pedal, and oh, this must be how they painted the interior. Rattle canned it. I'm gonna go ahead and put all these parts away. Let's get the Porsche on the rack, kind of inspect what's going on underneath, see how well built this is. And then we gotta get right into the overheating issue. We could maybe fix this for nothing or need to rip the entire engine apart. I, I don't know. Fire's right up. Man, this thing needs a tune. Transmission's buttery smooth though. Wow, is it loud. Do I have reverse lights? I have no idea. <laughs> All right, this was a pain to get the lift arms underneath there. I had to use a floor jack, but we should be good. Hopefully no crunchies. Yeah, the suspension is like rock solid. It just lifts right up. This thing probably handles really well, but it's got no power steering. I like power steering. It's way more legit. Raise yourself, Carrera. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go exploring what I got myself into. Oh, right off the bat, that could be why it's kind of loud. It's missing these two bolts. There's only three, right? Yeah, look at that. There's only three. And this one's got two. And it's missing that one. Okay, well, we can fix that. Maybe it'll be quieter. It's running through some mufflers here, street flow mufflers. Um, not the best exhaust work I've ever seen in my life, but kind of an easy fix. Like if we brought this over to Fluid Motor Union, they could make something pretty. I mean, like really, really pretty. But anyway, we have what look to be shorty headers that are wrapped and wow, I can't say I've ever seen these types of fittings used in the automotive world. That is gigantic. And let's see, lots of zip ties and harnesses and whatnot. Okay, we can fix all that, no big deal. And here are the coil overs. So aside from the suspension being dirty, I believe this car spent most of its life in 
in California and Arizona. So no rust, it looks really good. This could all be cleaned up, but look at these coilovers and check this out. I just did a really quick search. I don't know if these are the ones, but $3,200. And these cars handle well from the factory. I can't even imagine what this feels like. Dude, check this out. This actually looks closer to what we have. It has the reservoirs 6790. And I'm not 100% on these wheels because I think they are custom made, but I believe these are about $10,000 for the set, just for the wheels. 27 grand for the car and the wheels, tires, plus suspension so far with tax and shipping and everything is probably close to $20,000. This could be one of the best deal cars I've ever bought. This is crazy. I am seriously geeking out. So this is the factory Porsche transmission. It is a six speed manual. So that fits right in there. And yeah, they just had to made it to the LS. So here is the adapter for that. And this is from Renegade Hybrids. That's kind of the big name in these Porsche LS swap kits. They've been in the swap game for a long, long time. They make really good parts. So really cool that it's got that. But yeah, the rest of the car seems to be in great shape. All the seam sealer is still here. I've looked around. I don't see any signs of an accident accident. It's been lifted properly, it looks like, for its entire life. You guys might know better than me, but are these the factory Brembo brakes that came on a normal 996? This isn't a factory turbo car, so I don't know if there were options, but it's got big brakes. There's more of our super expensive coilovers, which look to be brand new. And here we go. This is where I believe we are going to spend a lot of time, the cooling system. This is utilizing what looks to be the factory Porsche cooling system. So that's a radiator and fan right here, and another radiator and fan here on the passenger side. Is that just not enough cooling? cooling for the LS or is there an issue? I don't know, but let's get into it right now because I'm dying to find out. Let's just start off by checking the basics. Does it even have coolant? Okay, so I guess they were driving this around without it being latched. I don't know. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Um, all right, right off the bat, we have what looks to be a one-wire coolant sensor in this hose here. Uh, I don't know if this has any coolant up here at least. No, that's air. Okay, well, that's a start. I mean, I couldn't imagine that's the issue that people gave up on fixing or something that they didn't do on the original build. I mean, someone put a ton of money into this thing, but you never know. You never know. People give up on stuff. What in the world is this? What in the world? Let's just go ahead and just put that back for now. One thing at a time, Alex, one thing at a time. With a project like this, you really just, you gotta focus. Focus, it's got coolant in the reservoir. Yeah, the reservoir is totally full. This system's gotta be a pain in the butt to bleed. And now that I have a DeLorean, I kinda know a little bit about cooling systems where the engine's in the back and the radiator's in the front. That thing we vacuum bled and it wasn't horrible, but I wonder. Now let's remove this air intake system. It's just kinda getting in our way right now. Not a whole lot to it. There we go. This is also part of the LS swap kit, this mounting plate for the engine. Something that's interesting is this essentially has three coolant temperature sensors. We have this aftermarket one, which I'm assuming controls the fans. We have the factory LS coolant temperature sensor, which is in the cylinder head. And this, which I'm going to go ahead and assume is the factory Porsche coolant temperature sensor. This harness and connector look to be factory. So it's utilizing three. One of the first steps in diagnosing a car that overheats in the city, but not on the highway would be the fans because you don't really need the fans on the highway. After about 30, 40 miles an hour, the fans shut off on most cars and the air that's coming in through the front is more than enough to cool off the radiator. So we need to we need to make sure those guys work. Now the question is, is this normally open or normally closed? So I'm gonna turn the ignition forward right now. Oh, and look at this, someone added aftermarket pusher fans. So the radiator and the AC condensers are sandwiched between two fans and this is, how I describe to you something being sandwiched. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like airplane signals here. I'm assuming this is normally open and then when it reaches a certain temperature, it completes the circuit. We have a ground right here going to the frame. So this is just a signal circuit right now. So if we touch this, Oh, we got fans. Let's go look at them. Fans are working. Uh, it looks like the pushers are definitely working. Hold on a second. We need to see if the factory fans are working though. All right, so the factory fans are not spinning. That's probably because they're controlled by the Porsche coolant temperature sensor. Same thing on the passenger side, but wow, I don't feel any airflow at all from those aftermarket pushers. And guys, these pusher fans, like they aren't doing anything. They should be flowing air towards the back of the car. They don't suck in a piece of paper. It, it Honestly, it feels like the air is just bouncing back the other way or the fans wired backwards this this is not this is hurting the car guys this is fantastic news pusher fans blocking factory fans with shrouds is not good at all that could definitely cause this thing to overheat while you're cruising around the city and i have a ton of experience with engine fans because of my 1000 horsepower turbo trans am i cut up the frame here in order to fit an aftermarket radiator in order to fit a gigantic turbo and i had pusher fans on this i probably had about eight different fan setups 
pushers and pullers and nothing worked. This thing would overheat in the city all the time, especially with the AC on. So what I ended up doing was going to the junkyard after measuring the radiator and I found factory fans from a Saab 9.3 for $50 with the factory shroud. That fixed all of my problems, guys factory fans, especially puller fans with a shroud, are usually the best option. If you can keep them on your car even after you modify it, definitely try and do so. Pusher fans aren't as good, and little aftermarket fans that aren't fully shrouded, not that good either. This hose here does have coolant in it. Watch. See the bounce back? That's the coolant hose test. If it bounces back, it's got coolant in it. If it has air, it's not going to do that. So that's good, but I just want to take this hose off here and make sure we have coolant going to the top of this water pump because this one kind of feels a little airy. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, that's air coming out. It's it's really not that low though. Yeah, we got a little bit of air in this hose, but this engine is cold at this point, so that's really nothing to be too concerned with. This could have the right amount of coolant in it, honestly. It could just be the fan situation. So uh, let's do this. Let's try and activate the fan. We should have a Porsche computer and the computer for the LS. So we got to find the OBD2 plugs for those. So right now I've connected to the factory Porsche OBD2 port because I'm almost positive that's what would control the factory Porsche fans. They're going to leave that computer on this car to control all sorts of factory Porsche stuff that still needs to work, even though you have an LS. First time scanning a Porsche. This is my first Porsche, by the way, or Porsche. Let me know. Do you guys say Porsche or Porsche? Uh, I, I just say Porsche. It's just it's just how I was raised. I know it's it's not right, but anyway, this is my first one, and that's that's what I'm calling it. So let's read out the VIN. Let's do a quick test here and see what control modules pop up. All right, I ran a scan of the entire system and let's see. We have some airbag faults, probably from the factory seats not being installed. Air conditioning does not have air conditioning. ABS, we're good. Oh, look at this. This is an automatic car. Anyway, we should need to go into DME here. Let's see if it'll let us go in manually. Trouble codes, engine missing. <laughs> Okay. All right. It looks like we are getting some information from the engine's computer, the battery voltage. We have engine coolant temperature at 83 degrees Fahrenheit. That's good. We can see that. Let's see active tests. It looks like we might be able to activate the fans. Let's go stage one. Ooh, I hear fans. I hear fans or fan. Let's see. Um, I don't feel anything on the driver's side. Yeah, this is all coming from the passenger side. That could be normal if the stages activate each individual fan. It could also be for the fan speed. So I don't know, let's try stage two. Stage two activated. Okay, sounds exactly the same. Yeah, we got nothing. This driver's side factory fan is not working at all. And it didn't increase the speed of this one either. This is more awesome fan goodness. I mean, broken fan goodness. This is what we want. That is a smoking gun. If we only have 50% of the engine cooling fans working and restrictive pushers right in front, that could be it, guys. We might be able to fix this thing for free. All right, we're going back up in the air to test out the fans. And I just found this sticker. This is hilarious. Engine is fitting with electronic octane knock control. Out of everything to write above an engine, why would they put that like with the general public the normal people buying this car they don't they don't care or know anything about that stuff it is so weird all right well this is fun something i noticed is that the driver's side doesn't have a wheel liner and i just reached in here and plucked out the connector for the fan and it wasn't connected at all so that would make sense we gotta find where this actually connects to and just plug it in and see what happens and this is a little goofy what they did here but these are factory resistors for the cooling fans you can see here that they're three wires so they control a high speed and a low speed but look what they did here they took the high and the low combined it into one wire ran it through an aftermarket resistor and then through that it eventually leads up to power the motor. So this makes sense on why when I switched it to stage two, we didn't hear any increase in the fan speed. They essentially just have one speed and only one fan working. I don't know. Let's go ahead and plug this in. All right. And I still have the key turned forward. So let's see what happens. It's working. Does that sound good? Oh, no, that's good. Just had to blow the cobwebs off, but that's working. That's working just as well. And it seemed to be flowing the same amount of air. I'm just curious, stage two? Nothing. And I don't know if this is high speed or low speed. It feels okay. It's like a medium speed. You guys, I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, why, why wouldn't they just have had that plugged in? That makes no sense. Why didn't they have that plugged in? That's so weird. All right, guys, here is the game plan. I am going to start this engine and let it run and start to duplicate the overheating issue. So I'm going to do that actually with that fan unplugged. And then we're going to plug it in and see if that fixes it. If it doesn't fix it, I think what we have to do is go after the fan speed. I don't feel that that is a high fan speed at all. It's pretty weak. I wonder because they're messing around with those resistors 
transistors if they had an issue with the fan speed and then during diagnosis they just left that off at the tail end of the previous owner's ownership they just kind of gave up this car was just given up on so anyway let's start this engine up see if we can duplicate it and we'll do the head gasket test here's the setup we have a fan blowing the exhaust out the door and i have a gauge for the coolant temperature so we can watch that all that's left to do is fire this bad boy up and yeah i don't i don't know what this is about i am geeky it's like really really on there too it's like glued on Woo! this has got to be louder than my caprice and my caprice is loud i have the porsche running in there but hang on which one's louder I really don't know. I mean, that one's echoing in the shop and this one's outside, but they're both very loud. Once we fix the force, we will definitely have a rev battle. Listen to this thing camming away. And you know, it's mostly surging because it's done tuned. Before the engine gets hot, we wanna do our block test. So we're gonna fill it with this special blue fluid just up to this line. All right, so we're gonna stick this here. And what happens is if we have exhaust gases in the cooling system, which would indicate a bad head gasket work crack block, this will turn green and yellow, depending on how bad it is. And we can draw in a little bit of this air like so like that all right we're good guys this is still totally blue it hasn't changed to green or yellow yellow is really bad we don't see any bubbles either that is an indication that you have combustion gases inside of the cooling system so i think we're good as far as head gasket we're not good as far as my eyes watering from this exhaust this thing needs a tune really bad so far we're only at 134 degrees we'll keep going so we're currently reading 175 and here's where the gauge is so it's off a little warm up <laughs> i just wanted to hear that wow does this sound good it's loud though i can't wait to fix the exhaust too i can't wait for a lot of things with this status update porsche is chopping away like like chop suey and uh we're at 197 degrees here we're almost at 202 the little pusher fans are working yeah we're getting nothing from the factory fan the one that we saw working before it's it's not on yet i, I would think it'd be on soon all right i found out that the factory cooling fans come on at 212 so we should have this one fan kicking on any minute now all right guys we're getting up there and that fan is not kicking on still i wonder if we need to have this other fan plugged in for the other side to work we were forcing it with the computer, but I wonder if the car itself won't turn them on. You know, that, that didn't, I just plugged in and it didn't turn this on. This could be an issue. The car itself is not able to turn the fans on at all. Maybe that's why the one was disconnected. Whoever built the car just put the pushers on and just figured that would be enough. And they weren't planning on using the factory fans at all possible we are getting up there and we still don't have any factory fans kicking on from what i can tell the high speed fans will kick on around 226 look at the temperature gauge when it's reading 225 when i got it off the trailer this needle was past this one line here we were probably in the 230 range oh here we go we're almost at 230 don't worry don't worry i'm not going to actually let it get hot enough to do any damage i just want to see if these fans will ever kick on the way that they built this car then we'll go around and fix stuff but you got to duplicate the concern and we saw it overheating when we got it off the trailer a little bit but i want to know 100 percent yeah we still don't have any fan activation at all i don't think those pushers are going to be enough yeah those pushers can't keep up at all look at that all right guys i am done 236 degrees with no fans kicking on and so even with the car off the pusher fans are still they're trying they're trying to push i think another issue with the pusher fans is that behind them where they need to suck the air from is a bumper but this has got to be it guys the factory fans just do not ever kick on and i think their workaround at least to have this thing rolling around sema was to add the pusher fans and call it a day and and, and maybe deal with it later we just got to get the factory fans working and i may even remove the pushers we'll see we'll see how low can the temperature go with the factory fans on this is awesome guys i live for this stuff like the diagnosis the figuring stuff out i mean i know i've had a lot of projects on the channel that haven't gone this way where you know we have bad engines cracked pistons this was a lot of work my twin turbo v12 mercedes that i had to tear the entire engine apart that didn't go the best especially with the suspension too my 99 svt cobra blown engine the insanity of getting my one of one concept space van fixed i've had my fair share of difficult projects so if all i have to do is get the factory fans working to fix this overheating problem i'll, I'll take it i'll take it this time 
time. Fingers crossed. Why do I say this stuff? I'm gonna jinx myself. Hold on. Knock on Toyota yellow. This is an FJ Cruiser color. Check it out. We're at 188 degrees. These pusher fans are still running. Take the ignition out. They still run. Now I know some cars have fans that run after you shut the ignition off, but it has been like 15 minutes and these have been wired to battery power. It's not even key on power, so not, not right. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. All right, I have a plan here. I have a plan. Check this out. They actually did a pretty good job on the wiring for those little pusher fans. They have individual relays, nice heavy gauge wire, and they have two fuses, one for each. So let's just hijack the wiring, move them over to the factory Porsche fans, and see if it overheats. All right, I've gone down the rabbit hole of curiosity. I'm, I'm just trying to trace back what they were thinking here with these fans. This right here is a factory resistor, and this is their aftermarket resistor that they added in. And check this out. Did that work? <laughs> just figured out how to show you guys this and use two hands. That's awesome. So this is a three wire. So we'll leave the ground lead here and let's see what do we get. Nothing, no resistance. That is normal because this is the high speed circuit. Now I looked up spec and if this resistor is still good, these do fail. This should be at about 0.7, 2, 3, 5, 7.7. Okay. So that's the low speed. And so the power goes through that resistor that turns on the low speed. And then there is a high speed relay in the car that will switch it. And then it just, it bypasses everything, goes through the other green wire and we have a high speed. Now check this out. For some reason they got rid of this and they added an aftermarket resistor running to the factory fan. Check out the resistance though. It's 0.7. So they must have looked up the spec on the resistance of the factory resistor and they thought they would replace it and go with that same resistance, not knowing that that's the low side. That is only going to turn these fans on on a very low speed. And in the case of this car, they're not turning the fans on at all. So they might have tried to fix this issue. Maybe they thought it needed the resistor for the factory Porsche computer to kick the fans on. That didn't work. So they added the pushers, wired them all up, and, and the rest is history. Went to SEMA and just been sitting around forever. I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I, I think that's a pretty good conclusion of what's going on here. I tested this one too, and they're both good. Like these factory Porsche resistors, they still work. To make it easier to get to the wiring here, we're gonna remove these gigantic Savini forged wheels. If you guys know anything about these wheels, let me know in the comments. Like closest thing I could find were like 10 grand, but I don't know, this could be more. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? These things are so light. That is, I was expecting like, a lot more than that. Whoa, that's really cool. I don't know why, but these have tape over them. It's very strange. Now we have to get this wheel liner off. Okay, that's definitely not the right size. And we have a 10 mil down here. And that's it. That seems to be all that's holding this in. I mean, there was more at one point. No, oh, another push pin in the bottom. There we go. This is where they cut into the factory harness and we are going to steal the ground here. And let's remove this whole situation. This is our power to the fan that we need to hijack. All right, so this is going away on both sides. We'll, we'll hang on to the factory plug though. And just for weight reduction, I'll go ahead and remove the factory resistor. All right, so we have to fish some wiring through. We got a new cabin air filter. Wow, look at that. All this money into this building, they can't just put a new filter in. What in the world? It's from 2008. Look at that. I'll add that to the list of maintenance we need to do. So this is our fan switch wire that runs all the way to that switch that was in the coolant hose. So this activates both of the relays. But you can see here, they have it wired for power direct from the battery. Let's see if we can chase down their wiring through here. There it is. I think this car was black. This had to have been black. There's their tape line for the yellow. Let's get this out of the way. All right, there's two. All right, there's our other side. We are going to rewire all of this. Make it work. Work now. Wait a minute, why? Oh my God, this is this is the ground. Did they make the ground red? They made the ground red. Wow, that is bizarre. We can totally switch these too. I wonder if these things were wired backwards as well. Look at this, they have connectors here, so we could, we could make this be right. All right. Okay. There we go. All right, that won't be confusing now. So these are our two grounds going to our fan motors. These are our two power wires going to the fan motors, proper colors and all. All right, so these are the two longer wires. We'll run these behind the battery, all stealth mode. these under everything. Found a good spot to run these wires through. Underground. 
and the power. Cool. So the wires run on the driver's side. We can get rid of this whole ballast situation. And even if I wanted to try and reuse these, look at how short they cut these wires. Get out. Oh, wait, I forgot. One more clip. Now get out. Do a little wire stripping. This tool is so good. Let's join some wiring. I'll slide over our solder connector and we'll watch the magic. There we go, the solder is melting, connecting these two wires. And now we'll seal this up. One down, one more to go on this side. We'll do the other side. See if these fans work. I mean, we know the fans work, but now we're gonna see if it, you know, cools the engine down and stuff. We like that. So I was following the fan activation wire and I had to remove the spare and it's behind the amp just spliced into this factory harness. So the coolant switch back there is the ground side. This is the power side. And let's take some of this off. So if we check here where they tapped in, yep, we have battery voltage. So that is a problem because at that point they're relying on that temperature sensor back there to turn the fans off. And sometimes when the temperature sensor completes the circuit to turn the fans on, it can take a really long time for it to break that threshold on the way down to turn them off. It probably killed the battery. But either way, we have taken over that system. So now we are running right to the factory fans and these guys are eliminated. And now if we take this wire that plugs into that sensor right there and just go right to ground. Woo. High speed factory fan action right there. Oh, these are beautiful guys. So much air, so much air. These are so much better than the other ones. Oh man, this is crazy good. Now let's put this back to where it needs to go. And the fans are not kicking on right now because the coolant temperature has cooled off. So now let's start up our engine. I wonder if this has a safety switch for the clutch. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, so currently the fans are not running and that's normal because we've cooled down to 135 degrees. We're at 163, no fans on yet. I don't know what this switch is set for, maybe about 175-ish. All right, we're almost at 175, let's see. Well, nothing yet. Just gonna hang out here until these fans kick on. You guys ever do that? Just gotta chill out. Oh, it's on. Woo! <laughs> so much heat is being dissipated. Hopefully not right into my microphone. Can you hear me? Oh, those fans are on. Okay, so 179, like 180. That's great, that's great. That's perfect. Now let's see how much hotter it gets than 180 with the fans on. I, I don't know, guys. I, I don't know if it'll reach 200 anymore, which is good. I'm gonna try to speed things up a little. Warm up, warm yourself. And this sounds so good. healthy guys she's healthy i love the ls i just love it oh my gosh look at that we just brought her down to 172 with the fans are you kidding you know it's weird i bought two rear engine cars within like two weeks of each other crazy so check it out this is working perfect so it cooled it down and the fans kicked off and now we're creeping right back up so it should hit about 180 and then we should get fans let's see i'm gonna talk to you guys while i wait for the fans to kick on What's going on in your life? Oh, they kicked on already. I was gonna ask you guys what's going on in your life. Still let me know. What are you guys working on right now? I'm working on fans that are, that are working. See that? They're working, they're working! The system is functioning properly. This is, this is great. So this thing's gonna run at about 180 degrees. I'm okay with that. Look at our gauge. And at 180 degrees, that's where the gauge sits. So it's a little off, but you know, you've mended the Porsche and the LS together. It's, it's not gonna be perfect. All right, let's turn this bad boy off. We are good. She is fixed. Ooh, those fans are blaring now. We need to switch that power to a switched power. And then as far as the fan system goes, we're good. Although I think I'm just gonna get rid of the pushers altogether, so we'll take those off. Here's the original listing of the car. Look, it had a big spoiler at one point. And 2017 SEMA show, and it was in the Battle of the Builders 2017, where it placed in the top 10 of the young guns. It's only covered a few hundred miles since the completion of the build. It's a tan inspired by the sand color offered by FJ Cruiser. But this was a couple of years ago, and you can see right in here, where where is it? Oh, here are all the upgrades. It's got a gigantic Texas Speed Magic Stick 4 cam, Renegade Hybrid engine mounts, 160 degree thermostat, and then yeah, Renegade Hybrid conversion kit. Oh, here we go. AST motion two-way adjustable coilovers. Yeah, seller notes it's very loud, but it should also be noted that the engine temperature rises in prolonged traffic and additional parts are said to be included to provide better cooling options for water and oil. Look at how they had this thing wrapped for SEMA too. So I bought it from the guy
guy who bought it from that auction two years ago, he paid 28,000 for the car plus whatever he paid the two shops to try and diagnose the overheating issue. So he did take a little bit of a loss and I do think that they rigged up the pusher fans as kind of a band-aid fix because they couldn't figure out how to get the factory Porsche fans to work. But guys, we did it. The SEMA built Porsche 911 LS swapped wide body is fixed. It's not overheating anymore. It's just working great. This is so crazy, guys. I fixed this thing essentially for free. Hey, the fans just shut off. Awesome. <laughs> You know what, now that the fans are controlling the temperature and it's not getting up into the 230 range, this could actually work as far as it kicking the fans off after the engine is turned off. But we're still gonna switch the control to a switched power source because that is more proper and I'm already just thinking of all sorts of other things we're gonna fix on this car. And in the next video, I think we're gonna drive it for the first time. I have to go through my normal maintenance routine with this thing. I gotta check the condition of the brakes and the tires and all that kind of good stuff. But we're gonna go for our first drive in the next video, see what happens, keep fixing stuff, keep wrenching, and we're gonna make this thing a real legit street car. We're gonna finish this SEMA build because it already looks really, really cool. I mean, I don't know about the seats on the inside, but anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, if this Porsche kind of pulled you in through the YouTube algorithm and you like guys that you know, wrench on cars throughout their videos, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and much appreciated. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. Porsche guys, is that how a lot of, Porsche guys, let me know. Porsche guys, let me know. Is that how like other Porsche models are? Porsche guys, let me know. Do most Porsches have their owner's manual so readily accessible? Porsche guys, let me know. Do all, or Porsche just uses really good interior quality part? Or Porsche just uses, or Porsche just uses really good interior quality interior? All right, I'm gonna put the part. All right, I'm gonna go. So they must have looked up what the resistance of the resistor from the factory was supposed to be and so they must have looked up what the resistance of the factory resistor was supposed to be, which is that point, was it 07 or 0.7? So they must have looked up what the, um, so they must have looked up what the factory, so they must have looked up what the, and I have a ton of experience with engines. Yeah. So unfortunately that wouldn't kick. So unfortunately that sensor, hmm. All right, so then that wouldn't have caused, so that wouldn't have necessarily, so if, so if it defaults to... Why is this leaking? <coughs> I sneeze in videos, but I cut them out. And then sometimes they make it into the bloopers.